It's Ms. Shar, and we are going to get jump right into chapter 5 of Tolliver's Secret. Follow along as I read. At first, it felt strange to be walking down the same old street looking like someone else. Ellen was sure people were watching her and wondering why she was dressed as a boy. What should she say if a woman walks up to her and asks, Why is a girl wearing those clothes? It's not very seemingly to show your legs. She pretended the woman had mistaken her. She'd pretend the woman had mistaken her for someone else. But after a while, in Ezra's old breeches, her legs free of skirts and petticoats, she found it fun to stomp along the cobblestone. She forgot what people might say. It was fun to dodge the ox carts and the wheelbarrows and run against the wind with no cloak to hold her back. No one noticed her at all. When she came to the pump corner, she saw that Dicey and the two Brinkerhoff boys were having a snowball fight. That's a fair match, Ellen said to herself. She turned her head so Dicey could not see her. Let them fight it out. But she knew Dicey had seen her when she heard her call out, Stop! Ellen's heart almost stood still. New boy, Dicey called. What's your name? Why, Dicey didn't know her. It was just like being invisible. Dicey had looked at her and didn't know her. Ellen peeped over her shoulder just in time, just to, in time to see Aaron Brinkerhoff push Dicey against a tree trunk and hold her there while Arnie gleefully scrubbed her face with handfuls of snow. Stop! screamed Dicey. Stop! Two against one ain't fair! She kicked and twisted away from them. Then, to Ellen's surprise, Dicey turned and ran away, crying like a bawling calf, which is a baby cow. Ellen stood and stared at her. For a moment, she even felt sorry for her. Well, at least she didn't know me, Ellen said to herself. I feel invisible. I'm invisible. I'm invisible, she kept saying as she ran happily down the street. Already, she felt better about making the trip. And then she felt a whack at the back, that's at her back that sent her spinning across the slippery cobblestones. The blue kerchief with her grandfather's loaf of bread flew from her hands. Swift as hawks after a field mouse, the two Brinkerhoff boys swooped down and snatched up her blue bundle. Try and get it, try and get it, Aaron called out. He held out held it out to her with an impudent grin on his face. When his brother Arnie grabbed for the bundle, Aaron snatched it and ran away. They played with it as if they were tossing back and forth it back and forth, daring her to chase them. Ellen stood frozen with fear. What if the bread was torn apart and the snuff box fell out? The British officers learned that Grandfather was a spy who was too horrible to think of. Grandfather hanging on the gallows tree. Her hands became fists and she, as she thought how two laughing boys could put them all in such danger. Thieves! She could hear herself shouting. Stop those thieves! She surprised herself by shouting those words in a loud, strong voice. She surprised herself, too, by racing after the boys, dodging in and out of the crowds, tripping over children and ducking under the noses of dray, dray horses. Stop those thieves! She screamed. They stole my bread! She ran up the, ran up to two redcoats who stood in the steps of the bake shop, eating hot little pies while they flirted with the group of kitchen maids. Please, sir, she gasped. Those thieves stole my bread! The soldier shrugged and laughed. Plenty of bread inside. The baker just opened his ovens. Now the boys were playing a game in front of the tailor's shop. They were tossing the blue bundle across his sign and hurling it between the wooden blades of a giant pair of scissors. Around them, a crowd formed a circle to watch the fun. Give me my bread, Ellen shouted as she leaped from one side to another. She felt as nimble as a lamb without her long skirts and petticoats but she never was quick enough to catch the bread. Aaron mocked her. Give the poor child its bread. He's starving. Starving, 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 shrieked little Arnie. He held the bread out for her and then snatched it away when she jumped for it. Two beggars watched with hungry eyes. Their bony fingers reached out to grab the bread. Even the public pig, who ate scraps of garbage in the streets, raced around them with greedy, alert eyes. The crowd laughed, but no one helped. And yes, when it says the public pig, back then there were animals every places and there was a public pig that walked around. Kind of interesting to think about. A little old woman who swept the steps of the tailor's shop with a broom of cor corn straw called out, called out sharply, What ails you Brinkerhoff boys? Always making trouble. Give the boy his loaf of bread. She stepped down in the street and shook her broom at them. Can't you see he's thin and hungry? Angrily, she pushed her way through the crowd. Her back was so bent that she was hardly as tall as Ellen, but she seemed to know what to do. Here, she said, as she thrust the broom handle into Ellen's hand. Here, trip them. Bread is precious these days. 
Ellen snatched the broomstick from the old woman. Without a moment's hesitation, she raised it up and brought it down with a whack across Aaron's legs. Her eyes were blazing as she watched him duck out of her way. It made her feel good to hear him yell. So as you can see right here, this is Ellen. There's the old lady who gave him the broom. She straight up is hitting him with a broom to um, trip him. Stop and see him dance away from her. Archie snatched the bundle from his brother's hands and whirling it about his head, he grinned at her. Try and get it, he shrieked as he turned to push his way through the circle of people. Ellen rushed after Arnie and whacked his legs too. Her anger was so great that he whacked his legs until he fell sprawling on the ground. Quick as a flash, she scooped up the bundle, dropped her broom, and looked all the or looked looked for a way out of the circle. This way, cried the little old woman gleefully. She yelled out her arms and made an opening for Ellen to get through. Run like the wind, boy, she cried. They'll be after you. Ellen raced down the street. Her feet, feet seemed to have wings. Where to go? Where to hide? She thought desperately as she looked over her shoulder and saw the boys and hungry beggars and even that awful pig, public pig, were after her. Two boys might catch a girl who had never run on cobblestones before, but no one could catch a girl who held her grandfather's secret snuff box in her arms. Stop him! She could hear Arnie Brinkerhoff shout, Stop the thief! The thief! Why, it was her loaf of bread, and why would they want it? It was just a game to them, no more important than a snowball. She jumped over the low stone wall of the churchyard and raced across the flat gravestones. Looking back, she could see she must have lost the beggars and the pig. Only the boys were following her, and a church warden who ran after her, flapping her his arms, shouting, Be gone! Be gone! After the wall, she scrambled into a street filled with hay carts going to the officer's stables. Under one cart and around another, she darted. Farmers shook their pitchforks at her as she whirled past. Don't alarm the horses, they cried, but Ellen didn't hear them. She had no idea where she was as she raced around the corners and down the streets filled with rubble. Everywhere, there were black walls of houses with roofs that had fallen in. Gasping for breath, she darted through a doorway of a broken-down house and crept into the old fireplace to hide. She was sure she had finally outrun the boys, but she couldn't stop shaking their, her knees. They jerked up and down like little puppets on a string. She sat down in the old ashes of the fireplace, tucked her arms around her knees, and pulled her head on her arms. Her breath came in great sobs and blew up the ashes around her, covering her breeches with a fine dust. This must be the way rabbits feel when the hounds chase them. If only I were back home, I could crawl into bed and put the covers over my head. Those boys, those horrible boys, to spoil everything at the beginning. It wasn't It wasn't to have been such a long walk to Front Street. She had done it before with Grandfather. Now I don't even know where I am, she wailed. Grandfather had never brought her to the west side of town where the great fire burned block after block last September. It made him sad to look at it in at it, he said. Six hundred houses had been burned in Trinity Church. It was lucky the whole city didn't burn up. Slowly, she began to collect her wits. Grandfather would have would have to find someone else to carry his message. She'd go home and tell him he asked too much of her. She couldn't go out in the streets and race her about like a boy. She couldn't go sailing across the bay to a place she'd never been and find a man she'd never seen. That was asking too much of a ten-year-old girl. She'd go home and tell him he must find someone else. She waited a long time to make sure the boys had not followed her. As she waited, she grew calm, and a strange, happy feeling came over her. She... Ellen Tolliver had fought two boys in front of a crowd of people. She not only had raced them and beaten them, but she had saved her grandfather's message and the bread was here with a snuff box still inside. She could hardly believe it. As she sat quietly, a new feeling of confidence came to her. Perhaps I can try to walk to the docks after all. She took a deep breath. Perhaps I can go to Jersey after all. Grandfather said it wasn't hard. I can start over again from here. I can find my way to Front Street. Very carefully, she crept out of the fireplace and looked around. There were tents where people must be living amidst the broken down walls, but she saw no one around, only stray cats that slunk away in the rubble. It must be getting near 10 o'clock, she said to herself. There, was, there were no church bells ringing on the hour, for the wardens had hidden the bells when the British came. She looked 
up at the hazy sun that struggled wanely in the gray sky. Grandfather always pointed out directions by the shadows that the sun cast. If the sun is on my left side, it must be the east, and the east river would be that way. Very carefully, she picked her way through the black rubble and f or now flecked with white snow. She at last, or in at last, she came to the streets lined with fine houses and beech and sycamore trees. These streets looked familiar, and the breeze had a salty, fresh smell of the river. As she stepped quickly along, she had a feeling this trip wouldn't be so bad after all.